Hello there, people of hyperspace. My name is Devontos, and it's time to get hyped, because here are 10 reasons to improve your gameplay in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I actually left the video out literally like 10 minutes ago, and I should be uploading right now. It's called 10 Reasons Why Noobs Suck at Black Ops 3, but if you're one of those newbies, I know I was hard on you, and I feel kind of bad about that. Kind of bad about that, unless you're deliberately being bad on purpose. But anyway, here are 10 reasons or 10 ways to improve your game in Black Ops 3. Now, number one, I said character appearance. The first thing you should do before hopping on Black Ops 3 is do research about the characters. You know, read what their specialist weapon or specialist ability is and decide what game mode you're going to be favoriting before you select that specialist character. So if you're going to hop on, let's say, Team Deathmatch, you're better off selecting Outrider, Sparrow, or Batteries, Grenade Launcher over ruins gravity spikes because you got more bullets which will give you more kills which will really level you up and then lock that cool gear along the road. Number two is bad gun customizations. Now I said this in my last video, you newbies are new, you want to test out the guns, see what's good and what's bad for you, so let's talk about the VMP. VMP is one of the early submachine gun unlocks. You're using the VMP and you decide to try it out with let's say a Varric zoom scope and you see that's a terrible choice, switch out your weapon. Even if you don't have another gun set, just use one of the default guns, because trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to play a lot better than that bad VMP you just created, until you go back to the lobby, or maybe back out from that lobby and just fix it right away before, you know, it costs you any more deaths, ruins your KD, and then every lobby you join, whoever sees your KD, they're gonna, just going to freak out and call you a terrible player. So switch out that gun as quick as you can if you see you're doing very, very bad with it. Another thing I said is bad sense of direction, or no sense of direction. Newbies, if you just picked up any shooter game, the one thing you should always do if you plan on playing online is hop on a private match. When you're in that private match, you know, scroll through the maps, study the maps, and you're gonna get a, well, a very good sense of direction of where everything is. But on top of that, since you're exploring by yourself, you have time to look at flank routes, camping spots, sniping spots, and anything in between. If you do this first before you hop on to competitive online play, you're gonna have a huge head start among the other noobs who actually never did that. I also mentioned that a lot of newbies don't pay attention to their surroundings. That's something you should really do. If your team is close to you, you're probably in a good spot. If you see you're by yourself, you're going to have to pay very cautious, keep an eye on the map, and make sure there are no dots or footsteps or anything near you, and try to get to your team as fast as possible, because you're basically in a danger zone, enemy spawns, or even if you're just by yourself and you're a newbie, pro players can last by themselves for a long time, but if you're a newbie, you can't last a couple of seconds by yourself, so get to teammates as fast as you can. Keep an eye on that map. Any red dots that appear, you either want to take them out or avoid them as much as possible until you get your teams back up. Being easily distracted is a very bad thing when you're playing online, especially competitive online, or even if you're just playing for fun. A lot of people play for fun, but they still intend to win. A lot of your other teammates are going to be like that. So if you find a soda machine or, or a sofa or a TV that looks interesting, just get a quick glance at it and leave. And then, you know, later on, join your private lobby and do some exploring around the map so you can see the little nicks and knacks and nannies and nunus scattered all around the map, like, you know, these animals that's caged in here, or maybe they're the elephant that's behind me, or anything else in these maps that you want to get a good look at. Take that time to do it in a private lobby. If you find something that catches your eye on multiplayer, you know, just remember what it is. After the game, you know, back out, go to a private lobby, and check it out as long as you want. Take some pictures, take some selfies with it, do whatever you want in a private lobby. If you do that in a public lobby, a lot of teammates are going to get really upset with you. Now, I didn't mention this in my last video, but bad weapon choices is something that really hurts you newbies. I see newbies run shotguns in huge maps, when that's a terrible decision. Shotguns and submachine guns are for closed maps. So before you select your weapon, before you actually jump in that lobby and have to count them before the match starts, when you're in the lobby by yourself, read the weapon description. I said in my previous video a lot of descriptions aren't accurate, but they're accurate enough so you can use them as they're supposed to be used. So, you know, before you actually hop into any lobbies for that countdown, read every weapon description and see which one you want to use before you actually start playing online. Also includes the weapon, that's what I want to talk about next. If the weapon isn't working out for you, but you still want to use it, just stay in the lobby and use it differently. And if you see it's still hurting you a lot more than it should, then just back out change the attachments and you know hop back in a new lobby i mean it's not everybody's going to call you a rage quitting noob but 
it's a lot better to be called a rage quitting noob than having your KD suffer and having your score suffer and then every time you join a lobby everybody's gonna look at you as that one guy who gets like three kills and dies 20 times. So it's better just to back out, fix it up, and try a new loadout before it hurts you too much. I also mentioned paying too much attention to the you know, objective, just like the guy in Nuketown who went like 4 and 44 because he was so eager to capture B-Dom. And at the end of the game, he caught B-Dom, but he went 4 kills and died 44 times because of a sentry gun and enemies you know, holding down B. Don't let this happen to you. If an enemy is holding down, uh, let's say they're camping in a house. If the enemies are camping in the house, try approaching to the front door. If you see they got that front door locked down and there's no way you could even get close to it, Try the back door. If the back door is too pinned down and they got the front and back, try the sides, maybe the second floors, and if there is no way you can get into their camping ground, just stop. Stay back and maybe, maybe try to snipe them off, and if you can't snipe them off, then just stay back and just take out any enemy wanderers who just happen to get close to your location. Which brings me to the last thing, care packages. Usually teammates try to call care packages in safe locations. If a teammate calls in a care package, like 95% of the time, he's not going to give it to you. The only way he would probably give it to you is if he verbally says, take my package. Or if he gives you some kind of sign, like, you know, he shoots at the floor where the package is falling, and then he shoots at you and he runs off, then you can take it. Or even if the package just falls and he just leaves, you know, take the package. If he dies now, you can do two things. If he dies, you can either protect the package and wait for him to come back, or you can do like I do and be a big jerk and just steal it from him and then wait for him to get back and then start teabagging because it was his fault he died and he shouldn't have left his goodies for you to take. So you can do that, and I highly suggest you do that. If somebody dies and their package falls, you take it and you rub it in their face. But anyway, that's the end of the gameplay here. If you liked it, punch that like button with a mighty force. You can follow me on Twitter at DevontosMan or Vine, which is Devontos. And as always, I'll see all of you in my next video. Have a nice day!